So I recently went to Daiso and I had a lot of fun in their stationery section and I thought I might as well share my shopping haul with you guys. Before the pandemic, I had bought this case for putting washi tape in. Um, I loved it. So since Daiso reopened, I went back and I got a couple more of these. I also bought a little thin washi tape. Okay, I saw this right when I walked in. <laughs> Look at this. It's um, a Ziploc bag. I only recently got a cat and for some reason I felt like I couldn't buy things with cats on them when I wasn't even a cat owner. But since I got my little Misu, um, I've been going crazy <laughs> buying all sorts of cat themed stationery, tote bags, mugs, just about anything I can get my hands on. Since I recently got this new planner, which I showed in the Mossery shopping hall, um, I wanted to get some things to help decorate my planner and make planning more fun. I found these little schedule stickers. So it looks like you can, for example, use one of these stickers to highlight a specific date. They have these cats cut in half so that um, you can use them to mark a length of days where you have something going on. So in this example, um, I believe I believe that says yoko, which means vacation. Oh, there's a cat laying on its back and rubbing its belly. Oh my God, that is so cute. Up next. Okay, I got some cat masking tape. There's a thin one. And there's a thick one. Ah, asobo. That means let's play. Cute. I also found this pack of Fluffy Friends Lake stickers. This is the Let's Play cat. See, it's a little black cat nudging a um, sleeping cat. Look at its tiny little legs. So cute. Look, it's smushing his little cheek. Okay, love it. I saw this pack of stickers and I thought it was just hilarious. These are parakeets on donuts and one owl. I don't know why. Look at that one owl. I just love the random things you can find at Daiso. These stickers are really delicate and they're a little see-through. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love the owl. So cute. 
Okay, let me try putting this on some paper so we can see how it looks. Here we go. Let's put something right on this page. Is this adhesive? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I have my little, not so little, um, journaling kit here. Uh, this is actually supposed to be a peak design, like travel accessory organizer. Um, but I, I ended up just using it for like crafting stuff. Okay. Seems really difficult. I don't think I'm doing this. Okay, this is really different from any stickers I've used before. It feels like it's almost part of the paper now. It, the texture matches really well. It's really matte. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna put a cat in here now too. Let's try out this masking tape. I have the obligatory Heron scissors that all the crafters have on their Instagram photos. Moving on. Look how ingenious these are. This is so Japanese. They have just the coolest stationery. So these are highlighters but they're stamps. So you can mark important dates, whatever, give yourself a star for a job well done. You can also use them like a regular highlighter. So I'm supporting a fellow YouTube channel. I saw the Kurzgesagt, sorry that I don't even remember how to pronounce that. Um, anyway, I saw their video on, I think it was the cure for loneliness. And it they talk about gratitude and they made a gratitude journal. I had heard about gratitude journals before, but I wasn't really interested in them because I'm actually agnostic and I've often seen gratitude portrayed in a religious context or its gratitude is portrayed in an overly touchy-feely light, which is a little off-putting to me. But in this video, they had a fairly straightforward approach to it, almost a scientific analysis of gratitude. So it really appealed to me and, and the journal looked great. So I went ahead and ordered it. We all know what it feels like when things are not as they should be, when you don't have the things you want, but there is an antidote, practicing gratitude. Science proves that the effect is real and that it can make your life easier. Another reason that I chose their gratitude journal over others is because it looked like they put a lot of work into it. It's just full of illustrations and it has some um, guides and exercises.
This is just really well done. I cannot wait to get started. I believe this is their logo. And it also has this nice baby blue ribbon. Okay, so that's that. Can't wait to get started. All right, I got another mini shopping haul. Um, I just needed a few things from Blick. I already opened this up, but I just wanted to share it with you. This is just an empty box that they use to ship some of these things in. So this is Daniel Smith, but it's not all Daniel Smith. And the whole reason I placed an order was because I have been searching for a warm yellow watercolor that is both staining and transparent. Uh, apparently that's quite difficult to find. I did a lot of research, uh, mostly through handprint.com. With all my research, it looked like Da Vinci's Hansa Yellow Deep might fit my needs. And then since I was ordering that, I was like, well, I still need a good staining warm red. Um, I decided to get two different ones to try out. Both Daniel Smith. I've got a Paraline Red and a Pyrrole Scarlet. And then I needed a warm blue. So I decided to try out one of Daniel Smith's um, watercolor pigment sticks. Extra fine watercolor stick. I got Phthalo Blue Red Shade. I already have a tube of Phthalo Blue Green Shade. They took care when packaging this. It's such a small thing, but they use this box with padding. Okay, and then I wanted to do some more India ink work. And while I have both a warm and a cool blue and red. I didn't have any yellow, so I got this golden yellow. It's Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay. Lastly, I got myself another Princeton Neptune. I just love these brushes. I have a number eight and a number 12 round, so I thought why not get the number 10. So that's it. Um, hopefully I'll be putting this to use soon and showing you guys how it goes.